Okay, we are looking at module four, lesson three. This will not be anywhere near as painful as the last video, I promise. Um, so we have a couple more things to look at related to the electron and the atom before we can move on to other things. So first thing first, let's talk about wavelength and frequency of light here, okay? Um, this right here is off of your reference table. It's the electromagnetic spectrum. I told you we would talk about every single part of the spectrum. Um, if you had physical science, you've seen this in there, and you should have seen, I think, bits and pieces of this in middle school. But um, what this does is this gives you the range of different types of radiation that have both electric and magnetic properties. <clears throat> and why are we doing this with the atom, you might be asking. Well, because the atom can give off electromagnetic radiation. And what gives off electromagnetic radiation is electrons. So we need to look at this for just a minute before we look at the relation to electrons, okay? Um, basically, in terms of this table, you need to know that, you know, it says down here, longer wavelength is on this end, shorter wavelength is on this one. So radio waves have the longest, gamma rays have the shortest wave. Now, in terms of waves, keep in mind, you know, like that with waves, we're talking about like this, and then, you know, if I keep going like this, um, what's happening is they're getting closer and closer together. So these have a longer wavelength. The wavelength is the distance between the peaks of the waves. You can look at it that way. So the shorter the distance between the peaks of the waves, the, the shorter the wavelength. When you get down here to the end, you know, like they would be really close together. That's an ugly picture, but it works. So... Something else that you need to know is that wavelength relates to frequency, okay? Frequency basically describes how frequently the, the waves go past you. So if you think of yourself as a bystander and you're standing here with a really long neck and short arms and there's a wave that's coming at you. Um, if it's a big wave, you know, like big wavelengths, one won't go past you but every so often. Whereas if it's got little wavelengths, like a wave would go past you very frequently. I cannot draw a wave from that angle. So the shorter the wavelength, the higher the frequency. So this end down here would have high frequency, and this end down here would have very low frequency. These also have very low energy, and these have very high energy. Um, these are very deadly. These are not. You are surrounded by these. Now, the only part of the spectrum that you can see is the part called visible light, and that's what I have a little bit about over here. We care a little bit more about it because... Electrons can give off light, and you can see it in terms of colors. So if you think about fireworks, you know, fireworks come out as different colors, and there's a reason, because the electrons in the fireworks are giving off different colors. And I need you to be able to relate this idea of color to wavelength and energy and frequency. Red is on the lower wavelength part of the spectrum, so red has the lowest wavelength. It's got the longest, not the lowest, but the longest, I don't know what I'm saying. Violet has the shortest. It's got the smallest wavelength, okay? They're closest together. Now, in the grand scheme of things, I get that this only fits in this teeny weeny little space right here, but it still matters to us because, hey, it's about electrons. So, red has the longest, violet has the shortest. Um, if you pay attention to this, if you've ever heard of Roy G. Biv, there's an indigo that's not, not written in here. Uh, it's the colors of the rainbow, and they go in that order. So if you if you were told that an, a certain substance burned with a yellow color and another one burned with a blue color, which one gave off the most energy? Well, the, the further towards the V in Roy G. Biv it is, the more energy it's got. So the blue would have the most energy in that example. Okay? So... One of the things that we do, and I'll show you in just a second, is like we can use atomic emission spectra to look at these different colors. Each atom has its own particular pattern. It's kind of like a fingerprint for atoms. So people have been studying this part of physics and, and chemistry for a, a pretty good while. So here's the spectrum that can be given out. Um, what this says is, you know, when, when atoms absorb energy, 
We've already said in terms of energy levels, electrons require energy to move up into higher energy levels. That's called going to an excited state or excite, exciting electrons, excitation of electrons. Well, when they fall back down, when they return to what's called the ground state, their, their lower energy levels, their energy levels of origin, so to speak, they have to give that energy that they gained back off. So they absorb it and move up. And then as they fall back down, they they release it. OK, so if you expose them to energy, you can take pictures of, of the spectra that they give off. And so you can look at the different colors and you can relate that to the energies of light. And the really cool thing is that nothing has the same two emission spectra. So it really is kind of like a fingerprint. So in terms of forensic science, this would be something that they would use to analyze what substances you have found at a crime scene. That's how we've analyzed stars. We can look at the composition of them from afar. Um, you know, so this has been very useful in terms of physics. Now, it's also useful in terms of this. Up above this part of your reference table is the Bohr model of the hydrogen atom. So sometimes you'll get questions that ask you, I think pretty simple things, it's kind of like reading a graph, like what happens when an electron goes from N3 to N equal one? Remember that N stands for the energy level. So if you look over here, find N3, it's right here, and you find a dot that goes from three down to one. Well, the first one I came to is it. This one is three, but it falls to two. So from three to one, if I ask you what it gave off, you just follow it down, it's the middle line. What it gives off is it gives off UV light and it has a wavelength of 103 nanometers. I know it's in nanometers because it says so right there, okay? Um, you know, if I ask you what you would have to do to get an electron to give off infrared light at a wavelength of 1,094, you'd come down here, you'd have 1,094 and just go backwards. You'd have to have it fall from energy level 6 down to energy level 3 is what would be needed in order to get it to give off infrared. <clears throat> now, um, Something else that's sometimes done is if it gives off visible light, sometimes it asks you to relate the colors or the, the wavelengths to the colors over here. The only kind of problem with that is that this is in nanometers and this is in meters. It's kind of frustrating. Isn't it? So, so what if it's this one? How would we figure out what color of light 656 nanometers relates to? Well, here's what I would tell you. You should know the prefix for nano. Remember you had micro, nano, and pico. Micro was 10 to the negative sixth or a millionth. Um, nano is a billionth and pico is a trillionth. So um, nano stands for basically 10 to the negative ninth. So here would be my advice. Put that in your calculator. If you put uh, 656 times 10 to the negative ninth in your calculator, and hit enter, it'll tell you that that is 6.56 times 10 to the negative seventh. Well, you know what? <clears throat> that fits within here then, because these are all to the negative seventh. So you're just, you're looking to see where this falls. Keeping in mind that since these are decimal numbers, like 6.56, a lot of people want to put it like right here because it comes after it, but no, this is 7 to 6.5, 6.5 to 5.9, like it's coming down in terms of just the first two digits. So 6.56 would fall in here. That would make it red. I have some practice problems for you like this where you're interpreting um, what happens as the electrons fall and relating it to the electromagnetic spectrum. <clears throat> The very last thing I believe that I have for you is Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. Uh, he's pretty famous for uh, some of his things. <coughs> Excuse me. His uncertainty principle basically just says that you cannot, I mean, if you want to sum it up, he basically says, like, you can't find an electron. Like, as soon as you find it, you've lost it. Um, I mean, technically it says it's impossible to know both the velocity and the position at the same time. 
because the idea is if you shine a light on the atom and try to find the electron, we just said over here, like if you excite an electron, right, like right here, uh, no, right here on this one, that when they absorb energy, they move to higher energy levels. So if you shine a light on an electron, what you make it do is move. So as soon as you found it, you've lost it and it's gone. Okay. So much shorter video. Please go over to the practice for this lesson. Complete the problems using the Bohr model of the atom. Don't forget that you can ask me questions during office hours. I figure most of your time will be devoted to that lovely, lengthy lesson, too. Let me know what questions you have, please. <clears throat>